Hey everybody! So today I wanted to talk about how I prep my 3D printed parts for painting. So today I'm going to use this Reject 3PO head. It's got some uh, little blemishes on it, um, some uh, places where the supports um, didn't come off very cleanly, so some really good areas to show some of the different techniques that I use to kind of fix some of these imperfections and to prepare it for the final paint job. Um, so today I'm going to show you some of the things that I like to do um, that I, I often use and then I want to show another technique, uh, basically a new technique that I tried out last night um, and I want to try it on a part where I've mixed a few of my different techniques together to see how it comes out and this uh, technique has been making its way around the, the internet or always seems to be that some, some new awesome way to finish your prints but at the end of the day you know, it's basically up to you what, what you prefer and what methods you like and what works best for you, basically, on time, budget, things like that. So first to start, one of the things that when I first started printing, my big thing was that I learned about was filler primer, um, specifically more of an, an automotive primer. So um, the automotive ones tend to be a little bit better. They sand really nice um, and they tend to be high build. Downside is they're not cheap. This is probably about $15 to $20 a can, depending, but for me, it's well worth it. Um, plus the side about these uh, filler primers is that they tend to dry in about 15 minutes or so, so you can put on multiple layers and then you can get to sanding right away. Um, so it helps you kind of progress and prep your pens um, in a fairly quick manner, which is really nice. Um, the next stuff I kind of started to get into are these body fillers and, and putties. So um, body filler, this stuff is great specifically if you're dealing with larger pieces that might have some a lot of like bigger blemishes or if you want to just quickly work over an entire area. Um, downside of this is it's messy. It smells. That's why I'm actually in a friend's shop today doing this video because I won't do this in my basement at home specifically when it's winter out. Um, definitely an outdoor well ventilated area type thing but I do love this stuff um, it's really great for certain um, applications one thing that I actually recently used it for is um, these are my 3PO shorts and I needed to make a modification um, to the crotch so that the legs would fit a little better so what I ended up doing was um, using um, some Sintra to shape out what I wanted and then I came in and I filled it in with the body filler which is great application for that um, you can see it is, it's a little messy. You got a little bit of a uh, sanding work and refinement to do, but it's solid um, and it works really well for areas that you might need to modify or some really, really, you know, deep imperfections that you may have. Um, another thing kind of in the same family um, is this potty, this putty, um, which is called icing. Um, it's again, it's, it's two part with a hardener. It's messy. It smells, um, but this has um, a little thinner of a consistency compared to the, the little bit of the thicker body filler. I tend to use this for smaller detailed things. I'll actually be using this on the, the 3PO versus the body filler um, right now. Um, to show you guys here in a little bit. Um, but yeah, this stuff is great. Um, one of the things that I learned working with this stuff is that work in small batches. When you add the hardener, you, you may only have up to five minutes, if that, of working time before it starts getting hard and tacky on you before you can do anything. Great thing with this stuff though, just like the filler primer, is it dries fairly quickly so that you can actually get to a point where your part is actually pretty well finished and ready for paint um, without having to sit there for extended uh, cure or dry times. Um, I know people like to use the, the Bondo glazing putty, but I think you gotta let that stuff dry for up to two is it one to two hours I'm kind of impatient so things that are, are quicker um, the better so the third technique that um, I actually just learned last night um, is using the uh, photopolymer resin um, so this would kind of be you know you know some people have used in the past like two-part um, epoxies um, that you they would use and coat the prints I've, I've done that before it wasn't a big fan because again that took a little longer um, for that to cure. Um, it was messy. Uh, the stuff would run and pool and I didn't have too much control over it. This you might think you might run into the same things thinking oh that's liquid kind of like the a two-part epoxy but there are actually some benefits to this and so I'm going to be really curious to see when I combine all these techniques that I've been using together where we end up. So the thing is I'm going to fill some stuff with the icing. I'm going to go in with this after I do a good sanding. Um, I'm going to fill, do this, probably about two layers or so, 
and then we'll see how well I did and we'll finish it off with a hit of the uh, filler primer at the very end. Um, so all this stuff should actually, because it's all very quick drying, I should be able to get it done quickly. We'll see. We'll see how per perfect I want to be. So to start off, we're going to start off with some of the icing. Um, I'm going to take some of them mix up my hardener a little bit before I pop it on here. So I just put a little hardener on my cardboard. Like we'll just put it directly on the putty or the body filler based on what they're using. Um, a friend showed me how he works in small batches and I actually really like this. So then I'll just put on a little, a little bit of this stuff. Not too much. I don't need that much. Don't need to be too much, but it's fine. Popsicle sticks. These are my friends for mixing. So I'm just going to grab very little bit. Just a little bit. Not too much. You really don't need that much for this. And I'm going to mix it in. And you're, I'm using all disposable things because this stuff is sticky. You can have things that you clean off, but honestly, I had like a million cardboards from all my deliveries and all the pizza. Pizza boxes are great. Cut it up. Popsicle sticks are also great because, again, it's messy. And I always have paper towels on hand. All right, so now we're mixed. we got to move. So I have these little metal tools that I, I picked up little metal spatulas and they're great for this um, and they, they clean up pretty nice. I'm going to just take the little bit of the putty and I'm going to cut my hair and I'm just going to spread it on and smooth it into some of these uh, places where I actually have some under extrusion on this print. So the goal is you don't want to put too much on here because um, you'll have a little more to sand. I'm going to get to work on finishing the rest of this. Okay, so here we go. We got the putty all sanded down and went ahead and did a light sand on everything cleaned it off just a little bit and we're ready to get started with the resin. Um, so when using resin, gloves are a must. I use nitrile gloves. Must, must, must use gloves. So get my gloves on before I pour the resin. All right, so here's the resin I'm using, which is the Vokes Lab, just their standard photopolymer resin in gray. Shake it up. And I'll tell you with this, a little goes a very long way. So I just have these little disposable condiment cups that are great that I got. And I'm just going to pour just a little bit here for now. It should be fine. And to put this on, use a little foam brush. Well, I'm just going to start up here at the at the top. Now, this is a little runny, so and you really don't need it too much to kind of get the effect we're looking for. And I'm just going to start brushing this on. 
I'm actually going to work this in batches, more so from that it is a little liquidy, but it clings decently to the surface. Um, but as I go along, it'll just be easier. So I'm going to start just at the top, brushing it on. And enough to show you what I'm doing before I uh, go into time lapse mode. But yeah, you just brush it on and thin layers. And I'm going to end up doing two layers. One of the things to note that is that this will, if you get enough on, hopefully you can see it, if you get enough on, it will start to kind of run, but not all that much. And it won't pull if you do keep it nice and thin. Um, areas where I do start having more detail, like let's say around a ledge here, um, lip over here has a little bit of a ledge on this side I come and put in here. It will start to want to pull, hopefully you can see that, right in there. And so what I've found with this, so you can brush it on and you can kind of control a little bit, but if you have areas where it's really starting to be a challenge with pulling, go ahead and hit it with the UV light, which is what we're going to use to harden this. So really quick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to harden this. I'm going to put this stuff at least away so it's not exposed to the UV light, so it's well over here. And next, what I'm going to do, I think that's not running too much or going to pull too much on me. Um, eye protection, since I'm using this by hand, I'm, you know, it's probably for UV light, it's probably not that much reflection or bounce back, but better safe than sorry. So these are just safety UV filtering lists, and they're really cool because they're in orange, so they look Maybe I like extra cool, whatever. Um, long sleeve shirts too. It's UV light. Protect yourself. It's good. So all I'm gonna do here is now let's say that I'm happy with this area. I am gonna turn on the UV light and I'm gonna hit it with it. This will literally clear cure instantly. So doesn't really take that long. So if I did this whole thing before I went to cure it, I would just do slow passes over this whole thing like this, very slowly, since it's just here. And honestly, that should be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And technically, we should be cured at this point. I'll take the sunglasses off. Now. Thing that's interesting is this is definitely cured but it's still tacky um so um what's interesting is if you've done um resin printing before you know that once you um print you go and you clean it pretty much in three baths of of alcohol before you use the uv light to cure it in this case we don't really have that luxury you have to remember that that resin print coming out of your printer has already been slightly cured um when it was under print format. So why are we doing those alcohol baths um, before prior to a final UV cure? It's because of this, it's this tackiness that we feel. And so the interesting thing to know with um, these uh, photo uh, uh, polymer resins is that what happens is when you hit it with the UV light, it's causing a chemical reaction um, to happen. And that chemical reaction in itself is actually inhibited by oxygen. So when we're doing it here in the open air, that top layer is always getting hit with the oxygen. So you're gonna end up with that tackiness. So on the surface, we end up with slightly uncured resin. Um, and so when we do the alcohol baths with the, the resin printing, you're getting rid and washing away any of that uncured resin before finally doing a final cure just to make sure that there is no um, additional residue. So what does that mean here? It means we're always gonna kind of be, unless we're like thoroughly washing this um, you have a full big wash basin for these larger pieces. It might be harder. You can sit there and hold this light if you think for 30, 40 minutes, which is kind of tedious, that it will eventually cure everything. It's not the case. Um, it may never cure on that surface layer just because, again, of the oxygen. And if you get in to understanding how SLA printing works, it's actually a, when you do the, uh, the bottom up prints and it's pulling it out. Um, that film in your resin vat is actually kind of a membrane and there's permeable, it's permeable there with oxygen and it, that, that, that little bit of that layer 
causes cure inhibition so your print as it's pulling out doesn't stick to that uh, the vat plate that you have in there and actually it leaves your print slightly tacky so each of layer of your resin will actually stick together so in that case it's actually desirable but here it's not so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this all covered um, in the resin and cured and I'll show you what I'm gonna do next to get rid of that tackiness that we feel on the print which is technically uncured resin so don't touch that I mean even though it's mostly cured you're still touching resin so keep your gloves on through all of this whole application when dealing with resin until we get rid of that tackiness so I'm gonna get back to doing this slightly sticky and tacky from our slightly uncured resin because of that oxygen inhibition that we talked about. So how do we get rid of this? Um, I have a huge vat of alcohol over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe this down with a paper towel and some of the alcohol try to pull off what I can. Then I'm going to use some 180 grit sandpaper and quickly sand this down really quick. Then I'm going to take a little bit more of the alcohol and wipe all of that off. Also, if you're doing that, you know, you are going to knock off some of the resin. Try to do it in an area that you can easily clean up afterwards. It shouldn't be a ton of necessarily uncured resin, but better be safe than sorry um, at the end of the day. So once I do that and I get it cleaned up, then I'm going to go in, sand it a little bit more, get it nice and smooth and ready for prep for some filler primer. So I'm gonna get all of those stuff done and hopefully I'll come back with the uh, quote unquote finished product, but not, not quite, but we'll hopefully have a nice uh, coat of filler primer and see how I did at the end of the day. All right, let's get on it. Alright, so I didn't get around to filming um, the other night, but the final product I ended up with the 3PO helmet, but here it is. Check that out. Not too bad. I'm actually pretty happy with this technique. This isn't exactly perfect by any means. I could have spent a lot more time in the initial application of the putty, um, but I was just trying to see how fast I could work for something that was a, a decent quality. And also this is two coats of filler primer. So what I remember what I did, I did the uh, putty, did some sanding of that, and I did two layers of the resin, sanded that down, and then I did two layers of filler primer unsanded. So this is also unsanded, so there's definitely a few little blemishes on it. But to be in this shape after only a few hours, not even really a few hours, I mean, I, I did it really, really quick um, compared to some of the other stuff that I've done with other techniques. So yeah, pretty happy. Um, Highly recommend the working in the batches with the UV resin helps me helps control it. Didn't really have too many um, runs or, or drips um, once I got into sanding, but yeah, looks pretty good. Cool, awesome. I'll talk to you guys next time.